Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today is a very special episode of Splat from the Past. It's a very, very rare interview I have today. Joetta McLean from the 1972 underrated George Romero classic Season of the Witch. Or Hungry Wives, however you call it. And I'm um, having her on the show today to talk about the making of that movie and um, what happened to her afterwards and her up-and-coming um, appearance at Living Dead Weekend in Evans, um, Pennsylvania. And I can't wait. This is a very rare interview, like I said. I get to interview Nikki Mitchell from Season of the Witch, and I can't wait. It's so awesome. Uh, let me correct myself. 1973 is the year Season of the Witch came out. So, uh, yeah, here is my interview with Joetta McLean. Hello. Hey, Joetta. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is such an honor. Uh, thank you for taking the time today. How are you today? I'm good. I'm excited. This is uh, an event for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, before Season of the Witch came into your life, what was your career traje trajectory? Were you an actress? Um, I was a model, mostly. I was doing a lot of print and runway, uh, but I was doing um, TV commercial work and, and things like that, but I had not really done uh, any film work. That was my goal, but I had that was my first real film. Yeah, I, I kind of figured you were a model. You certainly looked like one in that movie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, I was really young. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, uh, I had moved here from New York City, and uh, in New York I was doing a lot more runway and, and print. And then when I moved to Pittsburgh, um, I got into commercials and TV and, um, and met a lot of the people that I ended up working on the film with. Mm -hmm. Did you do any theater? I did not. Um, for some reason, theater just live theater just really didn't interest me. I'm, I'm not sure why. Uh, but a lot of the people that were, were in Season of the Witch were doing a lot of live theater in Pittsburgh and went in to have you know went on to have really good careers in that. Yeah, in theater, you know, you don't get a second take. You have to do it on the first take. And exactly, exactly. I think that would have made me a wreck. <laughs> yeah, you, you get really bad stage fright when you do theater. <laughs> right, 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 right. And, you know, I was, um, I had to make a living, you know, so it was kind of like, uh, you know, in, in terms of modeling, you could, I could always find something, you know, to to make some money and, you know, it might not be the most illustrious photo shoot or, you know, whatever. But um, in theater, the jobs that were paying jobs were few and far between, and I, and I had to support myself. So it really was, it wasn't an option from my point of view. Yeah, and just like in, in film, you know, you have to get an equity card if you want to get paid to do theater and all that stuff. Exactly, exactly, yeah. I had, um, you know, I had a SAG and after card, so um, that that worked, but, um, it, you know, the theater business was a lot, a, a long haul, and I had just moved to Pittsburgh and didn't have connections, and it, it just, it looked like, uh, you know, an unsurmountable situation to me, so I wasn't even really attracted to it. Mm -hmm. So how, how did you get cast in Season of the Witch? Um, I had done some work with Eastman Husband, which was um, a casting company at the time, and uh, I had done some work, you know, I had gone on calls for them and, and gotten jobs from them, so I was in their roster, and I also had done quite a few commercials with the Unhost um, and Ken Peters, and they were, had already been, you know, selected to be in that movie, and they had, had told me, like, you've got to go for this audition, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Unhurst called me and said, I really want you to try out for this part. It's perfect and we'll look great together because he could pass for my dad, which he was in the film. And <laughs> so I, I went for an audition first with um, Eastman Hardman and knowing that it was a, a latent, latent image film, 
uh, which was the name of the production agency at, at that time. But I didn't know anything about George Romero, or I didn't even realize that he was part of the whole picture. I was, you know, I was just going for an audition. <laughs> <laughs> so you 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 were you weren't aware of uh, Night of the Living Dead. Well, I mean, I, I had you know I was somewhat familiar with it, but to be honest with you, it hadn't really risen to cult, um, you know, view at that time. I mean, it really. It was a little later that it really became such a big, you know, cult hit. But, um, I mean, I had heard of the film, but when I went to the interview, the audition with Eastman Hardman, and, and they said, this is going to be a late image film, they didn't mention George Romero, and I, I didn't connect that George Romero was late in image until later in the, you know, audition process. Uh, my initial audition was just with Eastman Hardman, and then I got a call back to audition for George and Russell Strainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've interviewed many from the Romero camp, and the ones who um, were uh, born and raised in uh, Pittsburgh, they told me, uh, you know, the, the ones that, that that didn't know him but beforehand, they knew about Night of the Living Dead because uh, Pittsburgh seems to really take uh, pride in their local celebrities. Yes, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and, you know, all those people, Ann Muffley and, and uh, Bill Thunhurst and Bob Trow and Ken Peters, they were all local celebrities at that time because they were doing, you know, a lot of theater, a lot of TV, um, and Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, oh. which I think, I'm not sure, but I think that may have been where they met George. I'm not really sure, but I think that might have been their initial connection with him. Oh, yeah, he had several people from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. He tried to get Betty Aberlin to play Barbara in Night of the Living Dead, yes. but Mr. Rogers wouldn't let her. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right, yes. Now, when, when yeah, you, so that that oh. was the start. Mm -hmm. Now, when you got the script, uh, was it called Hungry Wives? It was. Yes, it was. And as we were filming, that was the name we were filming for. Yes. Yeah, it, it, it seems like Hungry Wives would be a much better title. <laughs> <laughs> well, it definitely uh, gave you a much different, you know, connotation. I mean, I think it um, it would have definitely attracted a different audience than Season of the Witch. Mm -hmm. did, did you think that the movie was a social commentary on domestic violence and neglect? Uh, I wouldn't say so. So much domestic violence, but it was certainly, um, it definitely was a commentary on, you know, American culture at that time and, you know, a typical suburban marriage. And, you know, I, I thought it was a pretty good insight into um, the time for me. And, and, you know, in looking back on it and seeing the film in later years, I particularly think, wow, I can't remember when things were really like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, George was really good at making, um, you know, horrific metaphors for um, social commentary of, of anything, yes. anything that he saw, you know? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And was, there was a lot going on with George at that time. I think it was um, kind of a difficult time in his life. Um, I, I certainly am not saying I got to know him well because I didn't, mm -hmm. but um, I think he had a lot um a lot writing on that film, and I think he was under a lot of stress and pressure personally and, and emotionally and financially, and I think it was a, a dark time for him. Yeah, uh, from the from what I've heard from people I've talked to, it seemed like George always had a, a, a dark time in, in his life, you know, with, uh, he was always battling producers and, and distributors on his movies and stuff like that, but... Right, right. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think he was... Um, he was very much a, a creative mind, um, yeah. you know, and the, the whole thing for him was um, the film, the script, the, you know, the vision, and not so much the legal, you know, the whole legal background, I think, was just, it, it really didn't interest him, you know, and, and maybe, you know, maybe he didn't have as much energy for that as, as it would have been better for him to have had. Yeah, he... He comes from that ilk of, uh, you know, very creative minds. It was all about, you know, creativity and talent and less about, you know, the money, which is a good thing, right. I think. Right. I was, right. 
I was reading that George had shot like four hours of footage on the movie, but there were some issues during the uh, editing process. I, I remember him saying once on a DVD commentary that uh, Season of the Witch was the one movie of his that he wished he could remake. Oh, interesting. interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I, I can't say that I remember him being particularly enthusiastic and seeming proud of what he was doing, but I don't remember him being particularly unhappy about it either. He was, um, on set, it, it was a very professional set. I was surprised right. I had, um, you know, at that time, late sixties, early seventies, um, there was a lot of partying going on in general, and a lot of times when you would show up for a shoot or, you know, any kind of uh, film, uh, you know, yeah. TV commercial, whatever, sometimes it could turn into an all-night party rather than work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, time to go. Um, but George, at least my experience, I don't know how he was on other films or with other people, but my experience was, wow, this is a tight ship. Like, there was no... Um, you know, there was no downtime. It was a long day of work, and um, everybody was. It was very professional. There, if there was partying, uh, it wasn't ever when I was on set. And we we shot until pretty late at night um, mm -hmm. most days. So I, I think everybody was too exhausted to have done anything else afterwards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> guerrilla filmmaking. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Do you remember how many days it was shot for? You know, I don't. Um, I, I feel like I feel like I personally was on set maybe a little less than two weeks, um, and you know, some days I, I might just have a walk through the door. You know, I wasn't actually did not actually have a part, but I was there all day. You know. Yeah. Um, but I think I, I don't think I had any more than maybe ten days work out of it. Um, and then we did some voiceover work in the studio uh, in addition to that. You know, that whole, the whole voiceover on the sex scene was um, between Ray Lane and I was really hilarious to, to do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can remember thinking, oh, my God, you know, I just know this is going to come back to haunt me somehow. Yeah. <laughs> you still get asked about that scene a lot? Well, my parent, my, my kids have been, um, you know, my kids have given me a hard time about listening to that scene and going, Mom, you know, what was going on? And I'm like, I was in a sound booth alone. Yeah, right. <laughs> but true, <laughs> which made it even chillier at the time, you know? Yeah, I remember the first time I saw that scene, I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe George, you know, put, put a sex scene in one of his movies because he never did. I know. <laughs> I know. I know, right? I yeah. know. Yeah, I think, well, you know, if you are thinking of it under the title of um, Hungry Wise, yeah. it makes more sense than right. under the title of, you know, I, I, Season of the Witch to me was misleading to me, um, and and it's a shame because I think it did hurt the, the audience that he could have had. Yeah. Yeah, that Jan White, she was so intense and scary in the movie. Was she a nice person off camera? <laughs> She, um, she was intense. She was very professional. Um, I mean, I really enjoyed working with her. She was certainly, she was very nice and uh, very receptive to me, um, which I was worried about, you know, because I was so young and, and I knew that she was an older established professional actress. And, you know, I was concerned that she, she might not, you know, be thrilled to be working with me. But she was very receptive and, you know, helped me and answered questions and encouraged me. And um, to me, she was a really positive person. She definitely was not a warm and fuzzy. Um, <laughs> you know, she was she was um, definitely a little distant and aloof. But, um, but I, you know, she was very professional. And, and I enjoyed being around her and working with her. And I don't know, do you know if she's still alive? I looked her up and I can't find that was, she's not. 
that was my next question. I have no idea. Uh, she's like, yeah. she was one of the persons I was trying to find from the movie, and I couldn't find her. I couldn't either. I mean, I, I didn't do, I'm sur- sure I didn't research as much as you did, but, you know, I couldn't find that she had passed away, but I also couldn't find that she ha- was doing something or where she was or, you know, it's kind of like she just fell off the face of the earth. Um, and I think she was originally from Pittsburgh, so I would have thought there would have been something in the Pittsburgh paper or something if something had happened to her. Um, I don't know. I, you know, um, it's, it's odd that I, I don't find anything about her. Um, I, I know that she, when she did the film, she was living in New York and she, you know, she was doing theater there and had work to go back to. So I know she had a career after, you know, Susan mm-hmm. the Witch, but I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't keep up with her, so I'm not sure what, you know, where she went from there. Well, if she's, if she's no longer alive, maybe someday a family member will come forward and let yeah. the world know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when I worked with her, she was not married, hadn't been married. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if she had kids. I, I have no idea. Weird. Yeah. Kind of just fell off there. Yeah. It's probably yeah. probably because probably because she was like that. That's probably why she was never in another movie George made. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You know, could be. I mean, I, and, and interesting that you say that because George has... Um, hired me to do Crazies, which was working under a different title, too, at that time. Right. And, and um, with Paul McCullough. And I filmed, um, like, five days on that film. And I, and then I just, I got dropped. You know, I, I, I don't know. You know, he never told me I wasn't in the film. Um but I've seen it, and I'm, my whole character is in the, in the film. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened, or I never had a, you know, a justification, or I never found out what was going on. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, at, at the time, I thought it was going to be a pretty insignificant film, so I was just like, oh, well, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> but I didn't know if, that I was not in it at all until the film actually came out in the theater uh, on a remake, because I... I had never heard anything. I didn't even know if the film got produced or I wasn't called for, you know, a rap party or anything. So I didn't know, like, what was going on. Um, but originally, I, I did shoot several days on that film. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. I never Strange. knew that. Yeah. Yeah. But when Season of the Witch came out, uh, did you go to any of the screenings? I did, yes. I was at, um, there was a party um, at George's house, and then... A screening at a theater downtown and uh, and everybody was there and you know it was again George seemed under a lot of tension and stress but you know it it was a real exciting night I mean for me being you know I was like wow I made a movie it's like oh, it's really gonna happen because from the time I went for the audition I was kind of like for real like is this for real um But then, you know, when I saw the people involved and and I knew that they had credit, I was like, okay, I guess this is really happening. But to see it, to see the actual film evolve was, uh, you know, it was, it was exciting. It really was. My friends were, you know, nicknaming me Star. And it was was like uh, definitely a highlight, definitely a peak. (laughs) (laughs) Was, Was people like just, you know, being freaked out by the movie in the theater? Um, not really. I think, um, not really. I think that, you know, nobody really knew where it was going, you know, like, um, I I think about the middle of the film when it gets really creepy and Jan White is being really weird. You you think like, where is this film going? Like it's, um, you know, it's it's mystery, you know, there's, it's like, I have no idea where this is going to end. And so the film, the, the audience was pretty hush, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was like, wow, what, you know, what is going, where, where is this headed? And at that time, while now you would look at a film about, you know, suburban America and, you know, go, oh, this is nothing. But at that time, you know, people didn't talk about stuff. They didn't talk, talk about any of that stuff, you know. Um, even talking about astrology was strictly like hippies and, you know, 
which I was one, but, um, <laughs> you know, people in, in the suburbs said, didn't sit around and talk about that stuff. So, it, you know, it was, it, it, it doesn't seem like it to people watching it today, but for that time, it was like, whoa, this is a little, you know, dicey. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to believe now with what you can see on film, but at that time it was like, hmm, this is, where's this going to go, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, after uh, Night of the Living Dead came out, uh, people were jumping on the bandwagon to make horror films, and they couldn't make anything as deep and poetic as Night of the Living Dead, so they started, you know, um, trying to do, like, you know, Manson Family type of horror movies, like I I Drink Your Blood, which was Lynn Lowry's first movie, um, Blood Sabbath, and then finally Texas Chainsaw Massacre started a whole new world of creativity. Exactly, yeah. (laughs) I mean, I, I remember that whole genre, of course. I remember, you know, that all happening. And I, and I remember, um, you know, Night of the Living Dead starting to really escalate in, in, you know, popularity and people talking about it and people having parties and, you know, um, dressing up, going to, to the theater, watch it again. And, you know, I remember mm-hmm. all of that. Um, and it was, you know, it was just amazing. It was really amazing. Yeah. And then, of course, I began to wish... Hmm, what happened to that film that he did that was with me in it later? <laughs> so he pretty much rolled right out of the witch into crazies. You know, it was um, in my mind at the moment, right now, it's, it seems like it was pretty, we kind of just went right into it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. Um, the character that I was doing in that film was. Um, I know I had one scene that I was really hesitant to do that was a semi nude in the in that old farmhouse and um and then I end up running out of the house like pretty much naked from the back running across the field. So I don't know, it, you know, maybe he decided that was too much for that film, it was the wrong direction. I don't know. I, I really don't know. I never really talked to him after that, which is kind of strange, but I didn't. Yeah. I, it was probably a producer's decision or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because he was always, you know, casting the same people over again if he liked them, you know. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, according to your IMDb, uh, season of, your, of the witch is your only movie, and you just told me about the crazies. But uh, how come you didn't make any more movies? You know, I I, I didn't turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> I thought at the time, uh, oh, this. This is probably a real career changer. You know, I probably, I'll probably get something else on the table. Um, at that time, unlike now, there were Pittsburgh was not a hubbub of making movies. Had I been living in New York, maybe things would have been different. Mm-hmm. But I had moved to Pittsburgh <clears throat> from New York, and um, so I just, you know, I just continued modeling for you know another seven or eight years after that, um, and. I would love to have done another film. Um, I really enjoyed doing it, and it, it would have. It was where I wanted to go from the beginning. I was kind of got sidetracked into modeling just to, you know, pay the bills. But um, it really was what I wanted to do. I I just didn't have the opportunity for another shot at it, which I would love to have had. Mm-hmm. Did you stay in contact with anybody from the movie? Um, I did stay friends with Bill Benhurst. Um, Mm-hmm. And we, you know, we worked together after that on some things, and we would have lunch, and you know, we kind of developed a friendship. And then Ted Peters, um, but I, I can't say that I, I ever saw anybody else again. Huh. So, what was your reaction when you heard that George had passed? Um, you know, I guess I guess I was kind of surprised because uh, in reality was, you know, significantly older than me, but in my head, he was kind of a peer, yeah. and, you know, it seemed um, too young for him to be, and I had heard anything, I mean, even though I never saw him again, um, you know, we, we had mutual friends, and I heard through friends what, you know, what he was doing or what he was doing, and, um, you know, I hadn't heard of him uh, being sick or anything, so I, I was surprised, um, but I did think to myself, oh, wow, you know, probably going to be one of those people that gets even more famous after he dies, you know, mm-hmm. which is 
such a sad thing that happens so frequently, you know? Yeah. He, 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 I cried for days, um, because I just love his movies more than any horror director. And, uh, he was going to be at a convention that October, which ironically got canceled because of the, all the fires that's been going on in California. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. So, and so it was just a, a, a weird twist of turns. And so yeah. Yeah, I never got to meet him sadly, but I've met everybody that's worked with him. That's I'm able to get and stuff. And I'm just so blessed that way. Cause I just love his movies. Yeah. Yeah. That's too bad that we never got to meet him. He was intense. You know, he was an intense guy. He, he had a really great sense of humor. He was actually very funny. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, on set, there wasn't, you know, if there was, it wasn't like there was an uptight set, but, um, you know, he, he was serious about what he was doing. He would joke from time to time, but he was serious about what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And it showed. I mean, I think that really showed in his work. <laughs> and, you know, it wasn't a joke to him. It was serious filmmaking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so next weekend, September 27th through the 29th, you will be at Living Dead Weekend in Evans City, Pennsylvania. Uh, I it, will. Is this your first time there? It is. I, I have no idea what to expect. I'm, <laughs> I'm really anticipating it. I, I think it's going to be a blast. I'm looking forward to it, but I, ha I really have no no expectation. It's, it's you know, just kind of walking in. Mm -hmm. Have you have you done signings before? I I have not. I did go to um, <laughs> recently um, a theater in Pittsburgh, the Row House, showed um, a George Romero film fest, and I went to see uh, Season of the Witch, and a couple of people there recognized me, which I blew me away, and asked me if they could like have a picture with me and an autograph, and I was I I was just like practically speechless. I thought it was so funny, but it was cool. You know, it was super cool. Made my night. It was uh, it was made it a much more interesting evening. But now I haven't actually ever done a signing. With uh, what advice can you give me? Um, you know, just you, you know, you know, be nice to everybody. You know, I mean, if someone gets out of hand, there's security there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah. you know, just you know answer their questions as best as you can, you know, and just yeah. have fun with it, you know? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it just being, I think it'll be super fun. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I got back from vacation Sunday night, and I went on uh, the, the Living Dead um, Weekend website, and I saw that you were booked, and, and I did not know that Lane Carroll had passed a couple weeks ago. Um, I had yeah. I had reached out to her about a month ago to uh, promote uh, her appearance, and I never heard back. Um, but I was like, that was really sad. That was very sad. Yeah, yeah. I never even got to meet her either. But I was just like, oh wow, maybe I can maybe I can get Joetta on and have her promote. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope uh, you know. I hope it's been an interesting enough story. I don't know. It, you know, uh, it's a long time ago. <laughs> Had you talked with me, you know, two years after that, I'm sure I would have had a lot more interesting tales. It's been a long time ago, you know. Oh, no, it's, lot, it, it, it's lot been... information through the brain. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's been very interesting because, you know, very few people know about know about um, Season of the Witch, and there's not much on, uh, written about it on the Internet. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah, I see that. And hopefully... Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I think it was... Um, you know, I think it was a turning point in George's career. It wasn't what he had done before. Um, and, and maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe it wasn't the best thing for him. I don't know. But, I mean, ultimately, I think it worked out for him. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a strange time, I think. Yeah, he was, he was honing his craft as a director. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, I think so. Yes. Well, ho well, hopefully the signing will uh, lead to uh, more signings and maybe even they, they'll, get, they'll book you over here in California so I can come meet you. Oh, I would love that. I would love that. I would certainly love to meet you. I'd love to see you in person. Oh. Definitely. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I would like to make it out there to one of these Living Dead weekends one of these days, but it's just so expensive to fly to Pennsylvania from California. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I know. I have a daughter in California, so I feel your pain. <laughs> 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 Flying out to see her is, you know, it's a deal. It's a big deal. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, Joe, Ed, I thank you so much for coming on today. I hope you have a lot of fun next weekend. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you so much for looking me up and, uh, and having an interest. I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. <clears throat> and uh, you have yourself uh, a fantastic day. Thank you. You too. I look forward to hearing from you again. Okay. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Joetta McLean. Ain't she a sweetheart? Yes, she was. She had some great stories there and some great anecdotes about um, George Romero's most underrated film, Season of the Witch. And I'm very blessed to have had her on the podcast today. Um, If you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Join my Tommy Kovac Comedian page on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, There's no shame in living in the past. Because the present sucks. Fire, dudes! <laughs>